the solid state relay bit the bullet. Ooh, boy. Yeah, the whole thing's turned to mush. Internally, it got so hot. So my electric vehicle lawn tractor conversion went okay, but it just isn't fast enough. And finally, after scouring eBay a while, I found this motor. It was about $120, and it does uh, peak 800 watts around 3100 RPM or so. And uh, these contacts are 10 gauge wire, which is nice. And this runs at 24 volts. Now obviously, since I have a 72 volt series circuit, what I'm going to have to do is convert that to three sets of parallel 24 volts. Just a quick refresh, the current motor is uh, wound for 120 volts, which is the uh, primary issue with it. Obviously at 72 volts, I will never quite get it there. It's about 50 volts off from what it's actually wound for. Since this is only wound for 24, I can achieve that. And in theory, I should reach my maximum RPM and efficiency. So I have to make a new coupling to go between the existing pulley and the motor. And I was looking at this and thinking about it and how my heights are probably about right from before. And I'm thinking what I might be able to do is weld all four of these together, but I don't want to have a bunch of grimy, lopsided stuff going on like I did last time. Instead, what I'd like to do, I'd like to be able to get all of these inside of this steel tube and drill a hole, maybe a few holes, for each of these nuts and then weld within those holes to tie them to the steel pipe. And I think that will give me a more symmetrical, cleaner coupling. Then the only other problem I have is this uh, keyway in here. I guess I might be able to just grind away to make room for that. And the diameters are just a little bit off, so I'm going to have to spin this and shave it down. Now, because this is so snug, I'm going to uh, give it a little heat lubrication. I had backfilled these holes a few times at 6013, but it was 16th inch, and so I bumped it up to 8th inch, and uh, that finally seemed to do the trick, so I'm just going to grind it down and see how it turned out. After a lot of grinding and some polishing and then doing a rough fitting, this is what I'm left with. This is the keyway here, so I need to grind that out. And I'm hoping I won't cut all the way through this bit of pipe here, but I think it's a distinct possibility that I will. If I do, it may make sense to actually weld back along the line and then grind it down one more time. Yeah. So I fabricated this, which uh, isn't pretty, but made out of a piece of scrap plate I had. And this locks the actual motor in. All of these are for mounting to the wood. And this is where the axle goes through. And here my coupling is jammed into the pulley mount. Seems to be a really good fit and I was surprised that it did fit so well. I thought there would be more friction. So this will go on something like this. Uh, 
a little gotcha. There was a raised ring around here, so I had to stick a washer under each of these. You can see that this was quite different with the previous motor, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to remove this raised half inch for a start. <coughs> and then uh, just see how everything lines up. Well, I'm way, way off. Basically, this entire platform has to be removed. And then I guess I'm going to have to drill and tap the uh, manifold itself. So this isn't really a shear pin. It actually holds the vertical position and uh, keeps this bolt from coming out of the coupling here. And that's held in place by the key. So weirdly, when this thing is going forward, <laughs> <laughs> it uh, unthreads the shaft. So I thought certainly if I reverse the polarities, then what's going to happen is it's uh, going to make the vehicle go in reverse. However, no, that's not the case. For whatever reason, it just seems that this motor is backwards in the, the wiring for the polarity. I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter. It all lines up, so this actually does work. <laughs> Well, here we go. Everything is wired up. With load, this 40 amp DC solid state relay uh, is still disengaging properly, so that should be good. I used copper rings and crimped them around all these wires, along with some ox guard, because it's aluminum wire. So everything is now in parallel at 24 volts per set with three sets. And 24.6 volts. So, getting a volt reading is going to be less of an indication of how much fuel is left, but it's still better than nothing. Might sometimes switch it out to a, some kind of better meter for this application. I'm going to bump it up to a few other gears and see how fast I can get. Well, in fifth, the, uh, solid, the solid state relay would no longer disengage, which was one of my fears. And uh, it's quite stinky and smoky now. Ah, uh, yeah, that metal's very hot. I thought maybe I could limp back in first, but uh, the solid state relay bit the bullet. Ooh, boy. Yeah, the whole thing has turned to mush. Internally, it got so hot. Whoops, okay, I'll have to switch to a high amperage mechanical relay. Clearly, that would be the better way to go. Well, here we go. I switched this uh, previous solid state relay rated for 40 amps DC to this uh, mechanical relay rated for 200 amps. I'm gonna make sure I don't have another burnout or a lockup. So that should be ample even at the fifth gear. However, Based upon the amount of amperage it was drawing that killed off that solid state relay, it went over 40 amps most likely. And this thing should only be pulling around 35 normally, which means that fifth gear is more in ratio than my 24 volt motor can handle because this is only an 800 watt motor.